I will be breaking down the Ultimate Self-Defense Championship, Episode 4 here. Of course, this one's mostly for fun. It's Z-Day, Zombie Apocalypse, as you look at me all done up there. Learn to fight like John Wick. Look at my breakdown of uh, how to fight like John Wick, the techniques of John Wick. And get my combative and street jiu-jitsu instructional on BJJ Fanatics if you actually want to learn how to defend yourself. It's highly rated and four and a half hours long. All right, these guys are going to be going through a little zombie apocalypse where you got to get keys and rescue some kids and uh, then find car keys and get out of there. Unfortunately, Rokas in a previous episode forgot rule number three, beware of bathroom. You got to know your rules to survive the zombie apocalypse. So the zombies will be coming at appropriate zombie speed with their legs banded together and bite marks. So you got to watch out for that. All right, instead of our six contestants, Clinton drops out for this one because he was busy running away from knives or something. And uh, Rokis Leo's wife, Gabby, takes his place. So this one should be fun and a little more lighthearted than the previous episode breakdowns. I do think I give good points on how to actually defend yourself and survive bad situation. Okay, they split their groups. First group coming up. Initially, you got to start by getting by some zombies on the gravel to get some weapons. And so it looks like we got uh, easy to hurt with Seth and Ramsey, I think. And the zombies were blinded by toxic chemicals but they still have their hearing so you're gonna have to get past them on the gravel to obtain the weapons all right i'm not sure the groups here it looks like seth and gabby and jeff chan in one group throwing rocks to distract I'm sure Seth has done his ninjutsu training for all you little kids on YouTube. Superman smack of death. And Jeff Chan remembers rule number two. One of the most important rules was surviving the zombie apocalypse. Double tap. Always, always double tap. So it looks like they got by them and got the weapons. Jeff ended up making so much noise that while Seth was doing his ninja walk, he could just start walking normally since all the noise was focused on Jeff Chan using his speed. All right, in the second group, here we got easy to hurt. Former Aikido guy that did five techniques, supposedly, in the martial arts ultimate self-defense challenge so far. They are remembering the limber up, so that's important. And you go, Ramsey Dewey from Shanghai, China. I can't see with a helmet on. Ramsey Dewey getting scared there. Easy to hurt. Skates on by, though. And triple taps him. The bang, bang, bang to the head and goes in just to make sure. So AC Mike looking cold as ice so far. Roke is trying to distract here. They got one foam noodle sword already. And now sneaking by. Ooh, long arms on Ramsey Dewey. Takes out that zombie. And looking like they managed to get by and get another weapon. So this group's also doing all right. All right, back to the first group. We're taking turns in each of these small challenges for the whole event. Got to practice with your weapons before using them, people. Practice, practice, practice. All 
I don't know. Jeff Chan looks a little jumpy to me. Not bad. We got we got Seth looking left. They're making sure to check other corners. Should have someone on back uh, back control, back patrol, just to make sure the exit of the stack. We'll get more to that as Icy Mike uses his SWAT training. Later, Jeff Chan kicks a door. A lot of anxiety going on, Jeff. What's going on there, buddy? Oh, smacking hands. Taking out zombies. Gabby goes in there. Oh, they're, they're making sure. I like that. You're never too sure. That's the secret of a good stabbing is repetition, repetition, repetition. Oh, see what I'm talking about? I don't know. Did Jeff have a little too much caffeine going into this? Look at that slip up there. Jeff, you're supposed to have the best attributes out of the bunch, man. What's up? Getting a little bit of heart rate going. Losing some of that fine motor skill. All right, they get into a dark room here, and they got to clear it. And uh, we're just kind of moseying around here, all looking in the same direction. Yes, yeah, Seth, you better check your six. All right, these guys are trying to clear the building now. Getting into that room. It looks pretty dark inside. All right, and what do we got here? Opening. Clear. Moving back down the stairwell. Oh, I think there's a zombie there. Yep. Jeff Chan gets in for the clean kill. Using his superior speed. Guys ain't watching their back very good. They've been lucky so far. Need to have somebody... Looking left, somebody looking right, somebody looking back like a triangle. New big room here, big entry to the right, 90 degree angle. I see at least two Z's in there, maybe more. That's what you got to worry about, Z's. Where there's one, there's often many. Got one down so far. Ooh, Gabby runs in fear. Luckily, Jeff helps her out. He white knighted Rokus's wife. All right, guy in the corner on the chair. Oh, there, there, that guy's down. Double tappity tappity. They're down and out in Beverly Hills. Jeff just making sure. Why are you guys in here, though? You got to be going for something. They're kind of forgetting the goal. I like that Superman whack-a-mole. Of Jeff Chan. Looks to be a pretty effective technique against these. Better make sure, though, sometimes your sword could get stuck in the skull and it's not as easy to remove as you think. Gabby just making sure. And she's the one, like, oh yeah, we're supposed to be doing something. She finds the keys. Guys are having a little too much fun on the zombie role players there, whacking them in the head a whole bunch. Now to the second group. It's a big warehouse. Easy to hurt taking control of the group here. That's pretty good. He's like, now we got to watch different sectors. We got to splice the pie. Slice the vice, excuse me. And I must say, Rokus, very good job editing this. A very, very good job. You did very good. It was a smart idea to take the extra couple weeks to edit this. And this was a very, very fun episode. All right. So they got different sectors and Perhaps your Mike's police work and SWAT training showing it's important. I kind of unofficially went through a SWAT school myself. 
So I do know a thing or two about this. And I work as an armed guard and armed security, protecting uh, people and kids and things of that nature. So they're doing a good job so far. And honestly, Mike did take good control of the group and got them to work together. Uh, obviously, we saw everyone make plans and not work together in uh, episode three which is something I talked about if you have a mass free killer type event and uh, hopefully give you some good pointers that could help you out there. Down and out. Making sure that door doesn't open on them. Oh, and blocks it off. That's smart. Now they decide to go in. One guy on the door. Ready to spear into the head there. That's good. All right, so who gets what corners? They're working good as a team so far. I mean, I got to admit, Mike's doing good so far. Mike could just refrain from his ADD doing stupid stuff. He might actually do well here. The dark room. Night vision. You're all too young to remember Chuck Norris in Delta Force. Ooh, uh, taking out those zombies left and right. Oh, Mike comes out with the double sword decapitation from the back. Oh, throwing dagger into the head. Oh, and finishes him off. Mike goes for the style points. Looks like Rokus was uh, knighting that zombie there. Back to the first group. Team Alpha. Ooh, entering with a chair. A physical barrier, a blocker. Oh, one in the corner, dark corner. Way to go, Seth. That one could have been bad, guys. Always check behind the door. Look through the crack as you're opening that door. And look to the other side where that guy was hiding there as well. You got to check your corners. So those guys are going to kill because Gabby's short. And they got longer arms. Seth has the girth and the bubble butt. He's perfectly suited for sumo. As we've seen in a previous episode. A breakdown of Dan the Wolfman proportions. The use of the chair here is very good. Guys against zombies or, you know, knife-wielding attacker, getting a physical barrier in between you and law enforcement. Don't be so reliant on that pistol up close range. A guy with a knife can stab you and cover that distance rightly quick. The 21-slash-30-foot-now Faulkner rule. So always try and get that kitchen table in between you, officers, and a barrier of a car in between you, etc. Always try and put a barrier in between you. All right. Seth taking control of the group. Hold that door. Don't let someone get behind me. Jeff Chan gets for the kill, and they're a kill for Seth. Kill counter. Uh-oh. They better watch that door. You don't go past without clearing it first. You got to clear each room as you go, unless it's a hostage situation. Then you might have to make a more quick attack. Uh, but you should have guys covering their sector, and you got to trust your men. you got to trust the guys in your group, men and women. Gabriella, excuse me. Oh, what's this? we got a zombie firefighter there spraying the extinguisher. That can be distracting. 
Keep in mind, guys, that fire extinguisher could be good to spray in someone's face and then conk them in the head with. That could be a good improvisational weapon. I got a guy creeping up from behind they haven't dealt with. All right, boom. Take care of that well. Nice kind of double or post attack there from Seth. All right, so these three are doing good so far, watching each other's backs. Going farther down the hallway here. Just making sure, never hurts. Just make sure. Never assume if you ever have to use a weapon that legally, of course, never assume that it's enough, but then again, stay within the boundaries of the law as well. You know, immediacy. <laughs> anyway, Seth is pontificating. Are these kids really safe? Are these kids, who are they? Show me. Found a room with a woman and children. You're not zombies, right? And Seth just, you know, takes their word for it. And uh, lets the woman and children go. Seth is my hero. Now, on to the other group. Second group up. They still got to go. Can they get to the women and children to rescue them? Good job moving together. Mike taught them how to stack and have hands on on each other, even how to open up and go into a triangle, it looks like. And a two-man entry to a room, you go back to back, and a three-man uh, you go in a triangle, usually two is enough, or you call on a third if there's too much to look at, like is a guy hiding under the bed, is a guy in that closet over there, things of that nature. Are you bit? I don't know. Oh, my God, and they're down. And uh, wait a minute, did Ramsey get bit? Ramsey, come over here. Oh, no, ice, ice, baby. I see Mike with no hesitation, no remorse, shoves a sword into Ramsey's brain pan. Man, ice cold. He's got more ice than vanilla ice. Henry Van Winkle, baby. Yeah, that's right. No hesitation. No, Ramsey, it's been good knowing you. No, look out there at the flowers like Carol. I don't know, man. I don't know if I want Mike on my SWAT team. <laughs> there was, I mean, there was no remorse there. So now they're down to two. I don't know. Don't be so beta to, to Mike there. Rokus, what are you doing? Man, you're like 6'3", and he's like 5'5". Five, five. Look at Mike, touch him gently, guiding him on. I don't know. Mike's on a killing spree, but he's going in there. He's using his stature to search under desks and hop up on chairs and tables. My goodness. Somebody get this man an axe. Ooh. Taking out that zombie. Pop, pop, pop. Ooh. Rokus. Did Rokus get bit, man? He let that guy get out. Oh, my God. That's what it is. That's my problem with Mike. Besides tricking children like he's actually a kickboxing instructor. It's that he's ruthless. He has no mens rea. He has no guilty mind. He's a sociopath. He just killed both of his teammates. And look how happy he is jumping up and down. That's what it is. It was Napoleon complex. He wanted to strap on that belt and gun. I don't know, man. Anyone out there been arrested by Icy Mike before? Let me know in the comments down below. What happened? Was his driving skills really as bad as I hear? 
sucking down lattes or something and wrecking police vehicles. I don't know. That's just what I've heard. It's just hearsay. I'm definitely not committing any kind of libel right now. Just pontificating. Because this guy's look, he's just stabbing left and right. Oh my god, he's got three weapons. He's throwing them. Oh man. And that zombie's down. He didn't he didn't like the knife throwing in the face. This troll is a hunting. This dwarf is looking for payback. He's on a kill spree. Looking for that dragon. Stealing some gold. Don't trust Icy Mike. I found, I found a woman and kids. I found a woman and kids. Awesome. I mean, he's trained his whole life for this. SWAT to rescue hostages. Hostages out. Hey, what's that, little girl? Do you bite her? Oh, my God, yes. I always go with... Oh, my God! He just stabbed her in the head! In front of the mother and the other sister. I'm telling you. I see Mike is a stone-cold killer. Wait a minute. That girl really wasn't turned into a zombie. He didn't even see if there were signs first. He was like, oh, you've been bit? Yeah, bam. No hesitation whatsoever. What about the hostages, Mike? I don't know, man. You think Mike would be hard to hurt in prison? Do you think some homeboys wouldn't be putting him down in the basement Like a certain scene. <laughs> Do you think he would be hard hurt in prison? Come on, be real, people. Now the serial killer found the other three. We got four now. He's like, uh, do we let this savage on our group? I don't know. I don't know. Well, should we let him on a group? She's like, no. I think he killed my husband. Where's the rest of his team? Did he kill them both? He certainly wasn't, like, out for them. He's just ignoring the rest and suiting up. I stole some swag. I want to get me that gold. I want to get me that dragon's gold. I don't know. Rokus Leo wants to act like I would hurt somebody, like I'd actually injure somebody. Even though I've been in martial arts 37 years and a sparring partner to top pros right before their fights where they couldn't risk getting injured. Even though I've done live fire at SWAT school with people crossing in front of me with us X crossing each other and with instructors trying to trip you and shooting guns right at by, by your ear. But, you know, yeah, I would, I would like break the neck i mean i could have there as we saw icy mike on the bus oh he's dropping his head low but is he acting actually acting like i couldn't show real self-defense skills what the difference is because i would hurt people oh and a bop on a zombie's head there with that noodle of course the uh Baseball bat, crap, my god, crap, my god, style. A lot of Ramsey Dewey was talking about. Apparently, those are pretty stiff, and they're not just pool noodles. There's a lot of drama going on in the Ultimate Self Defense Championship. I don't know. Rokish Cat wants to keep talking behind my back and say that I'd actually hurt somebody, even though I'm an actual protector. Even though I've actually been trained like Batman my whole life, and I actually protect women and children, unlike Mike, who just stabs girls in, in the head based on a four-year-old going, yeah, I think she was bit, stabbed, doesn't even look for any symptoms, make distance, assess the situation. Ooh, and Jeff there, using those superior attributes, except when he slips and falls on his face. Sorry, sorry, Jeff, got to get some in on you. Oh, my God. And that was actually scary considering the previous event where Clinton was way up high and we are worried about people falling to their deaths. So, uh, yeah. Oh, my God. These three white knights didn't protect Rokus's wife. Rokus, why are you friends with these people? They didn't protect your wife, dude. 
I mean, shit. Mike was taking out both his teammates, taking out little girls. I'm not, I'm not sure if that's the shot that SWAT was taught to take. Shoot the hostage. This isn't speed. Where was your training at, man? Come on. Speaking of which, if you want to learn the techniques of John Wick, definitely look at my video that I did with Viking Samurai on my channel or his. You will learn a lot about actual techniques you can use in self-defense and that John Wick himself used throughout the movies. Some of which based on my Fight Like John Wick video, maybe. Watch the video. It's very, very good. All right. They got quite a few stacked up here. There's a horde. The horde is attacking. And they're taking them out. Can I, I got to go back to Mike. I mean, even Carol let the little girl look at some flowers, look at some daisies before popping her. Did anyone do multiple psych evaluations on this dude? I don't know. It was really passive aggressive for a guy so lowly skilled compared to me when he interviewed me. Was he trying to help or is Mike just out to sell old lights and body armor to children and make people think he's a kickboxing instructor? When Who, who taught you to kickbox? Who taught you to kickbox? Better stick with that self-defense instructor claim, even though you think being upside down with your head low on a bus to get stomped and stabbed is a good idea. And you've done so poorly in all the challenges except the knife attack, where there should be a two-on-one elbow break or takedown, not a luckily kicking a knife out of a hand, but he did deal with that well. And uh, Jeff getting the, all the weapons, all the gear, all the glow sticks. I bet you Jeff took home that glow stick. Jeff, tell, let me know. Did you take home that glow stick? Did you stuff it in? Anyway, guys, I think this was a very fun episode. And uh, as much as Rokas was a friend turned friend of me, turned enemy, um, he did do a very good job with this series. And uh, though this really has nothing to do with actual self defense, I still threw in a few pointers there, people. Dan the Wolf, I'm trying to keep you safe. Get my competitive to street jujitsu instructional on BJJ Fanatics. Uh, at least as of yesterday, it was still on its biggest sale ever. Four and a half hours long. It's the highest rated self-defense on BJJ Fanatics or effective self-defense with 28 five-star ratings so far. Uh, looking up next episode, it looks like they actually go through third-party rescue. I have a video on third-party uh, rescue, how dangerous that is. But if you're highly trained, yeah, I've done it. And yeah, I will do it. And yeah, it's a, your job to be a protector. Um, so anyway, guys. Please thumbs up, share, subscribe. Let me know what you thought of this. Hopefully it was happily entertaining. Sorry I'm not a better editor that could mix sound levels and all that shit. I just don't know how to do it. Um, but Rokas did do a good job in editing this, so there's that again. And please let me know what you think down below. Always drop a comment. Fight the algorithm. Please subscribe. Check out my playlist. Please subscribe. I've done it all, every cover and everything in martial arts. If you look at my playlist, when I was younger, I've covered every grappling position, every self-defense uh, situation, almost every martial art. Look at my ranking martial arts videos and all that. Thanks, everybody, and I'll catch you on the flip.